in 1999, the city was doing what is commonly known as a merger and acquisition. We had seven local councils through uh, government restructuring that was being brought into one mega city, the uni city. You had seven financial systems, seven payrolls, seven plant maintenance systems, and so on and so on. We only needed one of each type. And we had the ambition of integrating these business processes so that we could deliver better services to citizens. It was the first of this kind of construct of a municipality that we had in South Africa. So in preparation for it, we did a lot of work essentially looking at global cities and tried to figure out which are the effective cities and try to figure out what makes these cities actually work. We came up with a strategy which we call the Smart City Strategy, but essentially it was actually a business process re-engineering exercise that we need to get to a point where we're not moving paper or it's not something that's sitting in people's minds. We actually need to have integrated processes across all of the environment and we need to ensure that the technology moves the work essentially through. It meant that to implement it, we had to fundamentally go and drive change in the organization. We had to do change business processes, we had to change technology, we had to build infrastructure, we had to recycle the staff, and we had to drive all of that. And, and that is what the Smart City Strategy is about. It wasn't really about technology, it was about creating an effective and efficient organization that could serve the people of Cape Town. Every organization wants to have its strategy implemented. Um, dreaming up strategy or thinking it up is relatively easy. Um, getting an organization to follow that strategy is extremely difficult. And this is where process and technology becomes extremely helpful. Because you take your strategy, you translate it into a set of processes that you get your organization to perform. When you add technology into the mix, you code, you hard code those processes and in turn the strategy that you had intended. And then you get better outcomes. Uh, for me, that's the value. One of the examples was the improved revenue collection. And we, all, we always had a view that if we could provide citizens with a transparent way of billing, so we could ensure that, first of all, our processes worked in a way where we would go and read meters, we would get the correct data, and then we would present that data to them in a way that they understood why it was essentially, why they were being charged for what they were charged, people would actually pay. And that's what happened, right? So what we found essentially is that once we, we, we did the SAP project and we actually implemented the processes, our collection rates started to improve and, and actually improved tremendously. In the two years before um, SAP went live, we were on our way to bankruptcy. And there's a famous curve that describes how our finances were dwindling right up until the point that the ERP system, that SAP, went live. And from that point on, we just had this uptick. The other impact was in terms of efficiencies. And one thing you need to understand with, again, you know, with an organization of this size, shaving off one rand or two rands of a process actually ends up basically saving millions of rands a month in the end of, of the process that you have. From a development management point of view, um, we had a paper system. A customer comes to you, submits a paper copy, and that paper file will travel uh, through lots of departments before it finally approved. Management took a decision in 2012 that we want to in embark on a integrated workflow electronic system. The DAM system is um, called Development Application Management System. It's built on a SAP architecture. It's a first in the world. It's custom built for our needs. And we had to, to appoint a project team with a quite a good technical skills to start cleaning the data to make sure that all data is within this database, captured at source, and for everybody to use within the Unicity. Your customer actually submit 
uh, via the e-services portal in the leisure of his office, in the leisure of his home. And that whole process is running fully electronic uh, to commenting departments like service departments, fire, water, health, etc. for the comments. All those comments are collated. It will come back and we will actually approve or finalize that development application electronically, which the customer can actually go and find on the e-services portal. By doing that, we've reduced a huge amount of uh, circulation time. We've actually cut down from 21 days to about five days in circulation time, uh, which actually speed up the process. Over the last financial year, we've, we've processed about 20, 21,000 building plans, and we've actually processed 8,061 land use applications. The co-application review uh, took place at the City of Cape Town in about 2018. The city was looking to make a determination uh, around where it saw its future in the digital space and how it wanted to use digital to improve its business processes, but also just to improve its citizen-centric approach to being able to ensure basic service delivery. So the co-application review that took place and the outcomes of that has resulted in a major digital modernization and transformation program that the city is currently embarking on. And this is really to try to sit down and help the city rethink its experiences. 